I knew who Rare was and I always respected them, but I never got to meet them until a week after I started at Nintendo. In come Tim and Chris Stamper with a 100% finished version of the first level of Donkey Kong Country. My first real task at Nintendo was to go figure out how much money it was going to take to buy all their hardware and software. Tim and Chris are like, there's this other game we'd like you to see. And they pitched me a game, funny enough, called Brute Force. That was Killer Instinct. It wasn't really anything other than just a, a demo. Uh, but when Nintendo came and had a look at it and they were looking at the 3D characters that we were building, um, they asked us if we could do a fighting game based on that because they liked the way it looked. They had a block button, they had no combos, it was just sort of a very simple, uh, I wouldn't say Mortal Kombat clone, because they had some really good ideas of the way they were going to let you level up your character in the arcade, but it wasn't KI. So I'd been playing a ton of Street Fighter, a huge fighting game fan, and so like I usually do when I meet the developers, like, that was a great idea. What if you did this? Within the first five minutes of being in the game, he was going kapow, pow, kaw, kew, kew. And he was really into his martial arts films and his martial arts games, and so we thought maybe we've got a real enthusiast here. And then him and Chris Tilston together um, kind of came up with a combo system, developed that, and took it to the next level. I wrote this spec, about 10 pages, of here's the way we should think about combos uh, for Killer Instinct. And in that original um, doc, you know, we talked about uh, just open auto double and finisher. It was Rare that came up with the idea of linkers. They came up with air jungles. But we again had to build all this from the animation set that we had in place. Uh, when we first started putting the animation into Killer Instinct, we tried hand animation, but then we switched over to using a motion capture suit. The best motion capture device that we could buy, and that's what we looked for, was something called Flock of Birds. It was basically a tethered solution. In other words, every one of these little sensors that was on, on the body of the motion capture artist had to be connected to a wire that went to a harness that connected to this huge apparatus on the ceiling. We got the 3D animation um, from data which was pulled in from small magnets which were on different parts of the body. You had to stand on this stage that underneath had a humongous electromagnet. These were all basically being detected by this giant magnet. And because the technology was young, it broke every time we did a character. The good thing about it was you could tell who was in the suit by who was moving around because of their weight and their size. And I remember putting high heels on and getting into the motion capture suit to try and walk like uh, a lady. Over time, we got good at, let's capture the special moves first and a whole bunch of just regular punches. You know, we think they're gonna look like this. And if Flock of Birds didn't go down at the end of our session, we'd have a whole bunch of extra moves. But some of our characters we had to build moves out of because the flock of birds stopped working. And so it's like, well, we don't really have the move that we wanted. Well, we can build it out of these parts of these other moves. It's not a 3D game. All we had to do was find the frames that would make that would look right with hits. Sometimes legs would be in strange angles. We didn't care. What we cared about was what the actual combo ended up looking like. Some of the characters, I think, were um, inspired by some of the films that I used to watch when I was a kid. Um, I used to be a big fan of films like Jason and the Argonauts or anything that had the Ray Harryhausen uh, animation in there. The, the skeletons, uh, the Greek gods, they always look fantastic. So um, we had the opportunity to make some monsters. So we put Spinal in there and Idol and Gargos. They were influenced by a lot of the features that you could produce with Maya. You could produce fire, and you could produce ice and water, so of course you're going to produce a, a fireman, I mean, an ice man. So we came up with Glacius and uh, with Cinder. Sable Wolf was, of course, uh, a bit of a throwback to the old Ultimate game, Sable Wolf. Jago actually started off as a, a test generic character for the motion capture, and so I built a ninja. And uh, because hair was quite a difficult thing to animate, um, I gave him this big quiff at the front and uh, it began to look a little bit more like my hairstyle at the time so it kind of got tagged that I was uh, uh, that character and I was building myself. It wasn't true, it was just a guy in sort of a rubber suit which I haven't got. I tell a lie, I have got a rubber suit but I don't wear that so often now. So I go there for my third visit to Rare, this is all in a pretty short period of time. 
and we built Jago's moveset. We did the motion capture for Jago, and we built his first open auto double and finisher combo. That was the first combo that was built for Killer Instinct. But what we didn't have was audio. So we first tried out cries and some hit noises for Jago. And we did it really crudely with just a microphone and like a cassette deck on the floor. It sounded awful. I think uh, Martin Hollis said at the time, you just sound like a brummy ninja. I get Chris Tilston on the phone. Dude, you gotta hear this. You gotta hear it. And what? And it's like, well, we put we put sound effects in. And they, they uh, put the phone up to the mic. And you hear, we'd also done uh, grunts and pain. So when you're attacking, uh, 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 and when you're getting hits, uh, uh, uh. so you had this, the Jago attacking sounds, all the hit sounds, and the Jago taking damage sounds, because it was just Jago versus Jago. And it sounded amazing. And they were, it was like addicting to them. You know, once, once they got that, you know, they were like, we are so on. The, uh, and the Kilkin! And uh, all of the, the different, ah, eh, eh, all those hit sounds, they were myself on Jago. I think I, I put a, a mouthful of yogurt uh, in behind the microphone, and that was how I did the voice for Glacius. One of the main voices that people remember from Killer Instinct was the announcer. I suppose Sud came around from his announcer voice in Battletoads. You immediately imagine this, this huge, big, hulking guy, but it's Chris. He just had a really powerful voice. He almost blew the mic, actually. We made some things really loud. So if even an operator came in and was like, this game's kind of loud, I'll turn it down. You heard, ultra combo! You know, or you heard them scream out once a combo got about six or cast about six or seven hits, we upped the volume of the announcer. We made sure that every hit effect was very, very snappy and had punch, really high highs on, on some of these hits. And then we'd layer them with a low end that would make them carry like all the way across the arcade. Joel Hochberg was our uh, associate in America and he owned a few uh, amusement arcades and so we would often put a machine in one of his arcades to see how it, it did and whether it attracted people to play it or not. The arcade industry was going like this. In fact, we were concerned before we shipped that maybe we've missed the arcade business. Joel's son, Scott, he said to me that there was just a crowd of people standing by this machine, so we knew that we were onto something that was going to be pretty popular. Uh, it was taking, I don't know, it was taking a lot, it was like $25,000 a week or something, this one thing that we were using to test it. The team built an arcade machine, a uh, pilot, the engine to build the game, the cabinet, the controls, the art, the entire game, everything, in about ten and a half months. We come in at nine and we go home at <laughs> Probably midnight. These guys were young and adrenaline filled. We spent such a lot of time late at night, early in the morning, just living, eating, sleeping, breathing, fighting games. When KI1 shipped, nothing else was close. Visually, it was beautiful, and you could hear it from all the way across the arcade. 